Man, oh man, I hope we're coming online because I have just had a weird, as per normal, I have had a very weird start. It's starting, it's live. Dave here, how are you? That was a bit of a rush to get everything happening at the moment. Crazy, crazy morning. Um, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, the 10th of September, Australian Eastern Standard Time, second weekend in spring. And how how is everyone? You know, I like to say good day, and I'm going to pop up onto here onto the live chat. I don't see anyone there yet, but here we go. Everyone's starting to pop in. Lost wits, good day. I'm going to act. Here's another little setting I'll fix there, and I'm going to punch up the size of the chat because I know how to. <laughs> you learn as you go, don't you? Uh, Brian, computer guy, love your videos, Peter Worth, and it begins. Uh, Apple, Ap Apollonio Rodriguez, good sound. Carl, greetings from Northern Kentucky. How are you, Peter Lisiak? G'day, Dave. How are you, Peter? And okay, so the sound, you're saying the sound's okay. It's possibly because of this floor. The um, what else? What else? Yes. That, okay. So I put rubber mats on the floor, and I have done a little bit more with the floor as well. And I'll talk about that a little bit further down the track. If I haven't mentioned it, please remind me. Um, Jeremy Robinson, hello. Look forward to your videos. Thank you, Shivan Mirage. Greetings from the Caribbean. David Marque. Hey, Dave. Very excited to be here. Well, great to hear to have you here as well. Carl, the sound is going great. That's thank you very much. Josh Hoex, hi Dave from Brisbane. G'day Josh, how are you? Now, you may notice, and I did put a post on Facebook, that there would be no video this week. And you know why? I ran out of steam. It's just crazy. The thing that I've made, I have here, and it's right beside me here. And I'm very excited about it. It's, it's an extension to what I had done before. It's, to tell you quickly, it is making that little Stanton bench, you know, the little thing that I've designed that sits on six bench cookies and it's basically a piece of plywood with some cushion strip on it and a, a tea track uh, and some dog holes, which I am using all the time. I absolutely love it. Well, I've tricked it up. I've tricked it up, something shocking. So now it's more like a conventional workbench, but still able to be used inside your house. Anywhere, kitchen table, dining room table, kitchen, bench tops, anywhere, you know, an antique table. This will be fine. And I'll show you why. All right, where are we? Uh, Lisa Afford, uh, Colorado Springs, um, 913, good evening. You sound good in NC. Thank you, West uh, Side Will. Let's see the 700. It's right there as well. Won't be long. Um, okay, Robert Jordan, hello from Phoenix, Arizona, Dave and even Gillisto, hello from Seattle, Jack Turpak, good day from South Carolina, Antonio Roch, good day mate, Jim Coogan, hello from Monroe, Washington, Michael Christopher's, good morning everyone, this is the hour I look forward to sitting in front of the computer weekly. Michael, I'd love to say thank you so much, but I'm also going to have to say you, I can't be the high point in your week, it's got it can't be that way. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Mike, but thank you anyway, Michael. Gary Jones, great pick and sound uh, from Fresno, visiting the grandchildren. Wayne, g'day. You're, and you're all from Mississippi. You develop a little bit of southern talk there, are you, Wayne? I can't even do it. I bet you can. You'll have to do it. You'll have to practice and let us all know. Send us a recording. We'll, have, we'll play it back. Andrew, hello from Mississippi. Misuga, Ontario, Canada, quite a cool evening tonight. Well, it's cool here as well. Sunny, but cool. Um, Grish Gaming, love the workshop. Still brilliant, mate. Morning from Queensland. Greg Begeni, hi, all beautiful day in Sydney today. It is Alastair Daniel. Hi, Dave from Scotland. That's an early start for you. Or do you get up early in the morning or do you just not go to sleep at night time? Samuel Roberts, hello from Gaines, Gainesville, FLA. Bob D, g'day Dave from New Jersey, Michael sitting at home and working at a slow pace these days. Fair enough. Nuts McFlurry, Oregon reporting in. Okay, let me have a look at what's happening today. Um, check the streams running well. Uh, live demo with the Domino. Now I'm going to do a joint with the Domino that 
a lot of people wouldn't really be aware. You know, they, they know that the domino is fantastic for doing side to side. They know that the domino can do angle joints and all that kind of stuff. But I can show you how it will do an angle to a flat joint. Now, that's something that I wasn't really aware of, but someone taught me how to do it. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, what a moron. Why didn't I think of that? You know, so that's good. And also, I'll show you an accessory that goes onto the domino that makes another type of joint a lot easier than you normally would have been able to do. And I'll take you through that very soon. Uh, reading a little bit more here. Uh, Dom Blotchello from Brazil, Jim Baitax, hi from tomorrow, Sunday, Sunday 1 p.m. right now. Uh, well, there you go. I don't know what, where are you on the moon or something? I don't understand. Uh, what's the next thing? Uh, Rigus Pitts, morning from the UK. Gary McLean, morning, Dave. I'm having a great time at the Melbourne Wood Show. Thanks for the tickets and watch you show tonight, your show tonight. Cheers. Okay. You have a great time at the Wood Show as well. And look, I'm so glad that I was able to get those tickets out to everyone. I have approached Impressive Exhibitions and asked them if they could send me some tickets for the Canberra Show, which is going to be coming along in about five or six weeks. And that'll be fun. So hopefully they'll send me another 20 tickets and I'll give those away as well. Where are we to now? Jay Parra, I'm here from Northern Carolina. G'day, Jay Parra, how are you? Pardon me, Barry Dima, or Dima. Hey, Dave Green's from Blue Point, New York. Jim, Battle Axe, Wellington. Oh, okay, uh, a message retracted from uh, Robert Jones. Peter Lissiak, Dave, a little trivia for you. What do you call threaded rod? Well, I call it booker. Booker rod, B O O K E R. That's what I've always known it as. I don't know if that's what everyone else knows it as. Uh, but when I was building external staircases, I'd run booker rod every four foot down a stringer, and that would pull the tension up on the stringers because exposed timber on the outside does start to rot away on the ends of the treads, and you know a couple of screws in the, through the through the tread through the stringers into the treads doesn't cut it. It will eventually go. And I've seen the blood when people have caught their leg as the, the string as a step is flipped out. Not nice. Book a rod. That's what I always and I you always use galvanize. Um, Jim, Wellington, New Zealand, the line is breaking up a bit. Okay, Adventures in Wood, hello from Vancouver, Washington, USA. Thought you were not doing a live show. I was doing a live show. I didn't do an ordinary video. You must read the whole post. The video that I would have released around about 13 hours ago, did not go to air. It will go to air. I've nearly finished editing. I've been working on the computer all morning, finishing off the editing. Uh, and it will happen. It will happen. But as I say, I didn't want to release it. I wasn't happy with how it had turned out. Uh, so I thought, you know, I'd just back up a little bit. Uh, okay, Pierre de Mungia took your advice, purchased 500 and 700 XL also. Couldn't make up my mind, love them both, New Zealand. <laughs> Good on you. Good on you. I wouldn't mind the 500 as well, though. You know, I, we, we get to the age where we can spoil ourselves a little bit and you say, you know what, why not? All right. Um, reading down through Cram. Uh, hello, I hope you're doing well and family. We got some rain, it slowed down fire, still five miles away. It has taken 177,000 acre, acres, but I'm going to watch your program. That's a lot of bush to get burned out. Uh, Don Shelby, yeah, hello from Dallas TX. I'm guessing TX is Texas. You guys got to remember, I don't know the states and their initials and everything. So if you can write down what state it is, that would help. I did have a little chart made up. But then everyone was trained and they were doing it and then I, I've lost the chart. So if we can go back to it, otherwise I've got to make another chart. chart. Um, after the inventor, well, there you go, Booker Rod, I was right. But I haven't been called that since a oh, bait axe. <laughs> Sorry. Well, there you go. Cliche, uh, Gaming Dave, I'm currently doing a furnishing certificate. Was wondering what is better for durability in a cabinet lid. Mitre joint, dowel, biscuit, or using the Craig jig, Craig jig and screw together and PVA. Oh, there are so many different joints out there. I'd really have to have a little bit of a think about that. Maybe if some of the other people, Carl, I know is pretty good with joinery. 
maybe some of the other people can jump in and help you with that one as well. Uh, let me see, what's the next thing? Carl, Threaded Rider is called All Thread in the US. Okay. Uh, great old Aussie bloke from New South Wales inventor Jack Thompson. Hello from Texas. Thank you very much for writing down the full word. Thank you, Texas. Jan Castilla, hello from Spain. Not a carpenter, uh, subscribe to your channel. Thanks for your videos. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, Jim, look again. It is said as ball tax. See, the thing is, I'm looking at a very bright light that's shining at me, so it doesn't look like I'm kind of half dead with my eyes closed and dark. And I'm trying to look above at a screen, a monitor that's three meters away from me up on the wall there. So that's why I may not be reading it 100% correctly. Ball tax. Okay. Anyway, uh, Andrew, the only festival item I have is the MFT3. Can't afford those tools. Well, that's a shame. Uh, Steve McQuinn, hello from Florida, sitting here waiting for a hurricane. I saw some, <clears throat> pardon me, I saw some things on the news the other night or on, on the internet about everyone boarding up all their, the fronts of their shops. Now tell me, is that to stop the debris hitting the glass and smashing it, or is it actually to stop the pressure of the winds just blowing the windows in? I'm not 100% sure why they do that. I would have guessed it's to stop impact from things being thrown around. Obviously, cars and trucks would go through the plywood, but, uh, you know, the smaller items. Uh, let me see, what's the next thing? Robert Johnson, morning, Dave, how are you? Hello from Adelaide. G'day, Robert, I'm well. Uh, Cram, Oregon, okay, Angler1262, hello from India, Indiana. Louis Gonzalez, hi there, from Lake Alfred, Florida, Hurricane Irma, at our doorstep soon. Great to be here. Well, hopefully I can take your mind off the hurricane for a little bit. Uh, Cram, it's near the California border, okay? Rob Hampton from Melbourne, how are you? John Lafferty, morning. Dave, g'day, John, how are you? Now, nearly a quarter past. This is, where does the time go? Uh, take a photo, I'll skip through this part here. Take a photo of where you're watching from, the, sh the show from, and email into me. And I'll show you a picture here that we've got. This is from Louis Uberg. Now, Louis uh, is over in Norway and he asked me, Dave, have you got any videos on how to use the jointer? And I said, yep. And John also jumped in and said, yeah, it's, uh, this is it. So he's got a glass of wine and he sat down with his wife to, in the lounge room to watch the video. Of course, <laughs> of course you would. Why wouldn't you? She was probably very stimulated. Uh, new, new married couple, and he says, darling, sit down, watch Dave uh, with the jointer, and let's have a glass of wine, and maybe this will put you in the mood. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, a bit cheeky, I don't. Uh, stay safe, Louis, from Wayne, and Steve McQuill. It's not how the wind is blowing, it's what the wind is blowing. Okay, wind, windows rated to 140 miles an hour here but not a plywood sheet flying at 140 miles an hour. Totally understand. Impact. Adventures in wood. Are you required to attend an apprenticeship program before working in AU? No, you're not. Just as long as you're working with someone who's a qualified trade, I think you'd be okay. The thing is, they've also said that if you can prove four years service within the industry, you may be able to get a trade certificate but you'd have to have endorsements and referees and everything. Uh, so an apprenticeship isn't crucial, but it's a bloody good idea. A lot of people uh, take on apprentices as cheap labor. Now that's not a great thing, and I know that it can be rorted that way, but also if you can get in with a builder who knows his stuff, they normally would like you to have an apprenticeship with them. You work with them four days during the week, one day a week at tech, and you pay for that day, like the, sorry, the, the boss pays for that day, and you get a certificate at the end of it. So it's good that way because you get a mix up in, in people training you. If you're working with one person, you'll pick up all these good ideas, but you'll also pick up his bad habits. So it's best to go, go the apprenticeship system if you can. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Uh, but it's been a while since I did my apprenticeship. Uh, I'm approaching 60 years old, so it was a long time ago. Uh, adventures, uh, right, okay. Murder Cynic, hi from Prague, 3 a.m. here. Well. You should be in bed. 
Now, send in photos, as I just said, images from viewers later in the show. Keep the channel afloat. Use the affiliate links in the description box below my videos. And also on this live stream, if you have a look just below the screen here, you'll see that there is a description box. It may not actually be a box, but at the bottom of that will say show more. Click that show more button and it will expand out. And there's links there to the Facebook pages. There's um, links to different things that I have affiliate affiliation with. Yeah, affiliation with. And also down the bottom, if you're absolutely desperate to help the channel, there I can show you some ways of doing it down there as well. Now, where do I go here? Robert Jordan, I need a new jigsaw. What's your advice between the Treon and the Carvex 420? The Treon is twice the power of the Carvex. So the Treon is normally the one that you use on external work. Uh, it's a 700 watt motor, I think. I think the 420 is around the 400 watts, but the 420, I think, is the new style of, of motor. I don't know if it's brushless or not. I can't remember. I did use that, the 420, in the last um, video that I did that I haven't released, but it's a very, very nice saw. The 420, I love it. The 400 was a bit of a flop for them. So they quickly moved on from that and went to the 420. I have heard some people have had issues with the 420. I don't know whether it's uh, the 420 that's in America, which is the 110 volt, or whether it's a 420 in other areas that are 240 volt. And so I haven't had any real issues with mine. It uh, It's a little bit uh, fussy sometimes. It has got a strobe light, which freezes the blade. So as, as you're cutting, it looks like the blade's just sitting still. And sometimes you'll get a little blur on that. Sometimes it will look dead still. And that really helps me a lot when I'm, when I'm cutting. Rather than watching just a blur, I'm watching something that's stationary. And I can follow the cut so, so well. Now, that is just such a minor, 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 minor thing. You know, it's not going to turn around. It's not going to make me turn around and say, oh, oh. <laughs> Do you follow what I mean? It's, uh, it's a nice saw. But the 300, as I say, designed for um, real heavy stuff. The 420 is more for a joinery shop. Let me see what we've got next here. Um, Graham Ormishot. Now, Graham has said that he may be up today. He's on medication for his uh, condition. Now, he's really not a very well person. He's just spent four to five weeks in hospital and he's out now. He's got his medication all sorted and he wants to get back to work. And why wouldn't you? And he sent some stuff in about doing a, a box from Raw. Now, this is just from Timber that he's had to plane up himself. I've created a little bit of a slideshow here that I'm going to throw up. Now, I want you guys to just be patient with me. I'm going to read through what Graham has sent me, and it's only that much there, okay? So it's not a lot. So I'm going to pop it on, and I'm going to start reading straight from the beginning. Hey Dave, as promised, hand cut dovetails. It's a challenge I think all Woody should have a go at. I've done lots now, but remember vividly my first attempts and thinking I was so far away from the incredible pictures and videos I'd seen online and in books. I found the best way to learn was to watch endless YouTube videos. Every attempt is better than the last and so satisfying when you eventually get there. The tools I used to hold down, mine is made from an old valve spring compressor as shown in the pictures, a couple of well-sharpened chisels, they have to be properly sharp, not shave your hairs off your pretend, uh, pre um, pretend sharp. They should cut across grain like it's soft cheese. My hammer is a heavy ball pane hammer head with a three inch handle. This gives me the weight and length without a large swing. The short handle gives me lots of control. I think it's in the picture somewhere. Up to now, it has had no visible effect on my wooden Narex chisel handles. Uh, saws are all important. Uh, I use a Japanese pull saw for cutting the dovetails. I find it gives a finer cut than conventional 14 TPI dovetail saw and is also much quicker. When doing lots of cuts, four strokes per cut is always better than seven. To remove waste, I use a jewel, jeweler saw with scroll saw blades. These are much finer and easier to turn than coping saw blades, although they do snap easily, so you need a good stock of them. Now, if this flips over to the beginning again, I'm just going to let it run. Okay, guys? There's only one or two more paragraphs to go. The secret, as with learning any new skill, is to enjoy the journey and go slowly. Don't get frustrated because you, can do it, you can't do it straight away, or even after several attempts, the learning process is worth it in the result, or is worth the end result. Essential is good lighting, an overhead lamp, 
that can be moved from side to side as, as the angle of the work changes and some magnifying glasses, either strong off the shelf reading, shelf reading glasses or a head magnifier. I use both depending on the mood. Okay, regards Graham. So thank you very much for Graham for sending that in. And you will notice that he's got, uh, he's put pictures there as well uh, on, um, on, on the finished articles that he's made. Now I'm gonna jump back over to the chat. Where are we? There. Uh, Robert, I need to, okay, you've seen the jigsaw there. Jay Parra, thank you very much. for What Jay Parra has done there is he's done a super chat. And I talk you through that in the description box if you want to do it. I don't ask you to do it. If you want to do it, that's fine. Okay, Rob Jordan, thanks for the info. 420 is the business. Yes. Carl, uh, Glinch Gaming, please join Dave's Facebook group, Dave Stanton's live dream chat group, and pose your questions with some spe specifics. The wisdom of the group is yours for the asking. Exactly right. Now, if you jump into that Secret Society Facebook page that we have, Carl's in there, and there's a lot of people in there that are very good joiners. And we have little chats, you know, off to the side without, uh, and we get a little bit, uh, naughty in there sometimes as well, but anyway, that's all in good fun. And uh, Carl especially will be able to help you out. Carl's very, very good. Next thing, next thing, next thing. So there you go. What do you think about Graham's boxes? That's just from a chunk of wood. And I know Greg Wyatt's just got a whole heap of firewood, some really nice red gum. And, you know, he may be tempted as well to just drag one of those pieces out of the fire pile, very nicely figured, and slide the plane across there and mill some up and make some boxes for his beautiful wife. I fix it up. Hi Dave from New York. I am new to your channel and was wondering if you do this live chat at the same time and same day every week. Yes, I do. Every week, same time, I try and keep this one regular. I, with my videos that I do, which is, you know, a little separate thing to the live stream, what I do there is I try and release those on around the beginning of the weekend. So it'll be either Friday or Saturday. I I really only get a chance to get started on the video, actually make the thing, think about it on Thursday, try and get a bit of filming done Thursday afternoon, do the majority of the filming on Friday, try and edit for the rest of Friday, normally during, deep into the night, and then Saturday, most of the day is taken up with editing as well. Then I try and get it to upload because I haven't got a super fast connection. It takes around six hours for a normal video to, up, pardon me, to upload. And if I've got a few minutes left before 10 o'clock on Saturday night, Sydney time, I'm doing well. <laughs> so there you go. But the live stream, I this is more a bit of a live chat and uh, I do a couple of demos. People throw their stuff in. We have a look at everyone else's stuff. And I'm just about to show another project by John Lafferty as well. You know, I showed some pictures the other day of John's cradle and where uh, the mum can sit in the cradle beside, her, beside the baby and rock and everything. And he's finished it. The baby's there, everything is happening, and how good is that? Carl, Dave, you told me I was absolutely right twice this week. Thank you. Well, you are, Carl. You know, there's there's this thing with age, wisdom with age. There you go. I'm going to try and finish all this chat up by half past, and then we'll jump into, uh, and then we'll try and jump into, um, I was just thinking about that last comment about the NBN. Uh, I don't have the NBN. I'm still on ADSL, not even ADSL2. So I'm just on ADSL chugging away in the background, not on NBN. And from the sound of it, I don't know if I want to be on NBN. There you go. NBN for anyone else around the world is the National Broadband Network, which there was a kerfuffle, it was all political. It was going to be optical fiber to every house in the country. But then we had a change of government and then it was decided to go optical fiber to the node now, the node is a little green box on the side of the road that is basically a mini exchange. That's from the exchange of the optical fiber all the way out to that node. And then will be copper from the node to everyone's home around from there. But you never can tell. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be good for us or not. I'm about three years away from the NBN where I live because I'm a little bit rural. Um, okay. So... I'm hoping that answers your question regarding, it should answer the question, regarding when I, when I stream. Yes, every week. I go on, don't I? <laughs> All right. Dave Matke, uh, I'd like to finally jump headfirst into Festool to make the end grain cutting boards. 
Do you think TS55, MFT3, Rotex 150, and a MIDI dust extractor are good initial purchases? Yeah. Now, the thing is with the MIDI and the 26, if you're going to stay in the workshop, I might suggest to jump to the 26 liter instead of the MIDI. The MIDI is nice and convenient to take around to different work sites. Uh, and a lot of people that have got vehicles and vans and things, they don't want a big bulky dust extractor in there. So the 26, the reason I say the 26, it's slightly more powerful, pardon me. And also you can put the boom arm on it. You cannot mount the boom arm onto the MIDI or the Mini. For a start, they're not heavy enough. They won't be able to support it, but you can't, they don't take the handle, you know, that you can push the thing around with. So have a think about the 26. I'm looking at buying a 26 very soon. I don't have a, a, a larger uh, festival dust extractor in the workshop. I've got the little sustainer style one and it's limited to what it can do. I would rather have the big fellow and have the little guy for just take to site for little things. Not that I do a lot of site work these days, but you know, every now and then I do. Uh, but the rest of the things, you're probably going to want something to be able to rip. So with the with the track saw, that's great, but it's very limited to what it can cut. It's great for panels, not a problem at all, but you may want to get their CMS because that will have the cradle that you can mount the track saw upside down and then straight away you've got a rip saw as well. And that would be what I would suggest you do. Okay, Lost Wits, uh, nearly no one does. Okay, okay can, uh, no network, is that what it stands for? Well, there you go. All right, let's have a look at the next one along, which is uh, John Lafferty's uh, creation that he made for his niece. Now, this is under construction. This is as he was making it. Got a few pictures around and about. And I'll see if I've got it here. Uh, no, I have some story about his workshop. There it is. There's the finished article out in the garden. This is at John's place down in down in the rural area near Canberra. And how nice has it turned out? Let's see if there's one with mum and bub. Uh, still having a look from all the different angles. John, and, there we go. She's saying, you know, thanks so much. That is great. All right. I reckon that's a really nice project. And how nice of John to be able to do that for someone. Do you get a kick out of making stuff? Not for the money. You know, if there's no money involved, that's the way I like to do it. Handing the project over at the end and saying, this is for you. And yeah, it's so, just so rewarding. You're, if you've seen the videos that I did on the, that pencil box that I made for my mother, uh, the last of the episodes is when I handed it over to her and she was stonkered. She was lost for words almost. That's the first time my mother has... <laughs> It's not had something to say. And I thought, well, that's that's a first. And uh, I ended up making another seven of the things, three, la three layers, because the, all of the other females in my family put their hand up and said, I want one too. <laughs> so I'm guessing that, uh, John, you would have got the same kind of response. And it's fantastic. Okay, Philip Quinn, my internet connection speed is advertised at 200 meg but I connect about 170 meg. Well, you know what? That's a hell of a lot quicker than mine is. Mine is super slow. Gary Jones, best part of making something is giving it away to someone you care about. Exactly right, Gary. All right, I think we're just about done through this. Unless, of course, oh yeah, all right, we'll, we'll have a quick chat about the um, uh, constructive criticism. Is that your name? Wow. <laughs> uh, you. You've got a great channel, Dave. Uh, love your videos. Hi from Ireland. Hi there. How are you? Um, <clears throat> I've had a couple of requests for people to... I've had one person come up and say, Dave, I want to get the phone out and I need you to say, hi there. How are you? And to a particular person. Uh, and I did it. And it was for a gentleman in the store in Adelaide. So Carver Tech has a store in Adelaide. And their assistant manager said, Dave, this would just blow this guy away if you could do this for me. And so we did it and it was good fun. And I think he enjoyed it. And I've got another guy from the Adelaide store. It may even be the same guy who's wanting to jump in and watch the live shows as well. So hi there, if you're out there, how are you? There we go. Uh, Dave, thanks for answering, Dave. Should have mentioned I'm from USA. and I don't think the CMS is available here. I was planning on just trying the tips, tricks, hacks 
to do the rips with the TS55. Uh, Jeff C, enjoy your videos, Dave. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, Dave, ch Dave, check first before you walk away from thinking about the CMS. I think you'll find it is would be available. It's one of their main items. It's, so it's the little stand that you... There's, there's two. There's a CMS that locks onto the end of the MFT3, and there's also the CMS that free stands, and that will take the router table, it will take the jigsaw upside down as a scroll saw, it'll take the track saw, and also it's got a linisher, which has got a massive motor underneath it. It's a ballsy machine. So have a think about that first. See if they, see if they are there. Um, it would be very handy for you to have if you've got that situation. It is slow switching the track saw out to be a track saw again, you know, it takes about five minutes to do, but I think with practice, it's quicker. All right. One last thing before we... No, all right. Two last things. I always do this. Okay. This one is... This one is last week. Now, remember how I've said I wanted to include everyone in what's happening with the channel. This is the stats from last week. And it was a fantastic week. Didn't it hammer? And this is what happens when I release a video that people really like to have a look at. And that's one of the reasons why my stats this week aren't as good. So there you go. We had 33,400-odd people were uh, subscribed. That's for the lifetime of the channel. And you can see I had around about 1.6 million minutes of viewing over the last 28 days, quarter of a min just nearly a quarter of a million views in the last 28 days, and 3,412 subscribers. That's amazing. Here we go. Now, this is this week's. This was around two hours ago. It might be slightly better than that at the moment. So, one point, nearly 1.8 million minutes of viewing, 263,000 views, 3,635 subscribers in the last 28 days, up to 33,896. I want to get that up to... Here we go. Here's a challenge for everyone. How about we try and get that up to 35,000 subscribers by next week? That's a big ask, but let's see if we can do it. It's always good fun. I love watching little meters ticking over. Do you, do you get a kick out of things like that? As I say, this is something that we can all share uh, and and enjoy. You know, it's it's a, it's a bit of an ownership for everyone. Where are we? Uh, English craft. Hi, Dave. Just got PGS delivered from UK to New Zealand. Just brilliant. PGS. Um, PGS or GRS. Or the path guide system. All oh, right, the path UGK path guide system. It is fantastic, and I used it again on this. I'm going to switch the camera around in a minute. Don't worry, and we'll have a look at the project that the video that I nearly released. Uh, Sean, good morning, one and all. Mitre Mike's which of hey David, love your channel. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Peter Woolworth. The CMS is on Bob uh, Marino's site. Excellent. Uh, Henry Alicia, hello from Philadelphia. G'day, how are you? And shall we have one last look? Yep, okay, here's John's uh, setup. And I'm going to read through this one. So we've done a little bit of this one before, but there's a picture from John's backyard. <laughs> how nice is that? That's from his shed, and that's the shed there. Um, okay, it started with a shed. There was no more than a large junk room. The first stage was making a, work pardon me, a workshop for my father. It involved walling up one third of the shed with the frame panel with MDF sheets and insulated with wall, with uh, earth wall. The floors were also painted with an epoxy paint. Set up his layers and dust collection. The rest of the shed was divided 60 40 workshop for me and storage. Dad and I were very comfortable with this until his passing late, late last year. Now I've taken over the two workshops and turned his area into my clean workshop. This is my computers, photography gear, 3D printer electronics bench and some storage due to ongoing illness. I also set up a day bed to rest as required. The other workshop is for all the dust creators, saw, lathes, CNC machine, etc. How would you like a CNC, hey? That's pretty amazing. And a 3D printer. All the basics are now set up and the workshops are very functional. Of course, there are very there are many covers, benches, drawers, etc. to build, but whoever really finishes the setup in a workshop? And that's the view out his back door again. Absolutely lovely. Who would like a view like that? That's a typical Australian view. This is rural Australia. Uh, in, in the mountain range, in the Great Divide, there's a beautiful gum tree in the foreground and off to the mountains in the distance and pasture. 
in between time. Now, all that land used to have used to have um, we used to have little kangaroos called potteroos, and they would use they were used to be the lawnmowers around here. Now, with white settlement, uh, we've had a lot of cats come into the country, and I've, unfortunately, a lot of those little natives that used to be so good at keeping the place pristine have gone. You know, it's terrible. All right, what's the next thing? Colin, thanks for taking the time to, uh, to share your knowledge. Thanks, Colin. Blankenship. Joe Parra, that view is amazing. Makes me want to move. Uh, love John's backyard. How would you like that? I think he's got a few hundred acres there. Well, John will probably correct me if he hasn't. All right. That's all of the subscriber uh, donation to the show. And again, if you can throw some stuff to me, that's fantastic. If you can send it to my email address, which is davestantonfans at gmail.com. That's probably the best way to do it. I've had, have had people ask me, oh, start talking properly. I have had people ask me what I prefer. And I've said, oh, whatever. It's probably the best way. If it comes in on Facebook, I'm really not going to be able to go back through all the Facebook posts and pull them out and drag them into the show. It's so much easier. It's all collected in one area. Done. Let's have a look at this bench. Here we go. Oh, walking, walking, walking. Bring it over to about there. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to get as excited as I am about this thing. But this is the thing here that I made. This is the drop down. This is instead of me having to use Arthur's bench down the back there instead of using a sliding Deadman to be able to support articles that are too big to use these guys. Now these ordinarily go on the top and they hold something for me to be able to plane or work on. But taller things like that, I can't stand them up there with that, but I can lock those on using, let me get some. using these ones. Now how I've designed it is, and I'll take you through, I'll take, I'll take you through all of it further down the track in the video, but I've designed it so these holes up the top here, these are for, for clamps, these holes down the bottom here can't be used for clamps because you're going to bump into furniture underneath. This is designed to sit on top of a kitchen table or a kitchen bench, and you don't want to be pushing these through the holes down there and smashing into things. So they can go into there quite nicely. So like so, up against the rubber strip. Sorry, I'm, I'm mucking around getting things organized. There you go, that's not going anywhere. Now, there is no, I, I haven't anchored this to the bench. This has got anti-slip cushioning and it's got a trick as well. And I'm not gonna tell you about that. You have to watch the video. So anti-slip here and here. Now the reason I've done those there and there and not down here is because my clamping point is going to be mid-range, mid midpoint between there. So that will stop the piece of timber rocking off one way or the other. So if I had that strip on the top and not there, I wouldn't get a true 90 degree to the top. Now I spent a lot of time and I also tell you how I got that 90 degree back to the top there as well. And it's so easy. But as, as I say, there are so many things on this that I had to try and cover in this video. I didn't know where to start. I didn't know whether to just do a whole video about the bench and another whole video about the build. So I've decided that I will do a whole video about and combining the pair. It's going to run about 20, 25 minutes. So if, I think it'll be worthwhile watching. So if you want to build one of these and then take it to the next level, which is really ballsy, I'm so excited about. You know, when I finished building this and I, I, I set things up, I just stood in the corner of the workshop and looked at it. Now, is that weird? Is, is that, am I a weirdo for doing things like that? Do any of you guys make something and you just stand back and go, how good is that? I love it. Look what I just made. So people think that I'm a little bit strange because I get so excited about the things I make, but 
the, the half the joy is designing the thing, half the joy, I'm going to do a weird thing here, half the joy is designing it, half the joy is making it, half the joy is sharing it. You know, this is what we were talking about before. So really it should have been one third, one third, one third, but I'm, I'm imperial, so I'm, you'll have to, so <laughs> you'll, you'll have, to, I'm, I'm, in, I'm metric, I should say. So uh, you'll have to forgive me for not getting the imperial part correct. Ah, anyway, that's it. So I'm going to show you, I'll show you one more thing. One other thing I may do, I may also put a T-track right along there. Because that will let me then use this in the front. And that might be easier. But I wanted to try and do it so for people that had dog holes and they didn't have any access to T-Track, because that's another cost, there's another 50 bucks straight away for the T-Track and accessories to go with it. T-Track itself isn't too expensive, 20 bucks, whatever. But it's, it was just in case people only had uh, clamps or, or some way of holding it on rather than, well, with utilizing those holes there. All right, I'm going to have a look back at the chat here. I'm not gonna to go too far, I'll be right here. Okay, Dave, where do you get your happy pills from? You're always in good form. You don't see me all the time, Spot, I tell you. Um, look, I've got a great life. You know, there's no one coming here trying to uh, take my country from us. Uh, we're, we're far enough away in the Pacific for most world events not really to, you know, that aren't really going to involve us. We're happy. We're happy in Australia. We, we really like Australia. Um, what else have we got? Adventures in Wood. The CMS is available on Amazon, but you better get a bank loan first before purchasing. John, why the large radius on the bottom of the vertical bench? Not all that storage when I build or even just fix something. I'll leave it on my workbench for a week. Okay. John, that's a very interesting point. This is the area here John's talking about. Now, I have four children, 10 grandchildren, and another grandchild due in another day or two. So I'm very, very kid aware. Now I know when kids come into this workshop, because they come and visit me, and I won't have the machines on or anything like that, but they do want to see what's happening. And if you're doing something, kids are so interested in what you're doing. You may not be aware of that, but they are. And if I had a little guy in here, pick his head up like that, I don't want him to scone himself on a sharp corner. If that was still sharp, you know, go straight into his forehead. So that's been rounded. And also, I put a one-eighth radius on the round over on the on that round over as well, to make it people friendly. I want it to be something. As I say, I designed this so you could use it inside a house. Now, inside a house, there's kids. That's all there is to it. So this can sit on a kitchen table. You can leave it there. They're not going to hurt themselves with it, just as long as you don't have plants hanging out the side like this. That's why it's there. Um, all right. I hope that answers it for you. Next thing, next thing, next thing. Okay, so Jay Power, not, not at all strange when I build or even just dig something, leave it out on a bench. Okay, yeah, the higher you get from it. It's, I know, it's great, I love it. All right, how's the time going? Let's jump into, oh, oh, right, I wanted to show you one other thing here. I jump around a lot, kind of. One of the other things I've done is I've made these, this set of dog holes and I used the UJK path guide system to do all these as well and I show you that in the video but I've managed to get them perfectly in line with the dog holes going across the top as well and so I have a three-dimensional setup here straight straight 90 degrees and I'm demonstrating it here that's there's nothing holding that thing there at the moment there is a dog right there. So there's a dog. And I can put another dog further back there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you probably, you probably can if I move that out of the way. And how about I bring the camera over here. Come around, come around. Now, is that going to show it? I'll tip it down a little. I'm getting a bit of shine off the top of the, uh, off the top here because it's got the wax finish on it. All right, so 
This series of dog holes is perfectly in line with the series of dog holes going down the back. You're probably not going to see me there, but that doesn't matter. I can now put that on and push it up. The anti slip, the, the cushion is working brilliantly. How good is that? <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh, well, I'll tip that up a little bit. You've got my jaw, and that's about it. There we go. That should get me. All right. So, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And there, there are a few tricks to this as well, as I say, that you're going to have to watch the video. And I'll, as I say, if you want to, you can make one of these, but wait till you see the video because I spent a lot of time and I went forward three steps, back two, went forward four steps, back one, meaning I made a few mistakes as I was going along. So wait till you see the video. That will solve all of the issues for you and just hook you in and do it. Total cost of this extension around the bottom here, 10 bucks. <laughs> Can you believe it? I walked into um, to the place that I normally get my ply, which was Mr. Ply and Wood down at Penrith. And uh, I said, right, I'm after a bit of three quarter inch birch ply. I need a scrap. What have you got? And he was showing me this, all this stuff. Oh, yeah. And I said, how much is that one? Oh, no, it's full price. And, oh, oh. and I thought, yeah, oh, I'm not really interested. I said, what about that piece leaning up there? It was a piece 300 wide, which is a foot close enough by 2.4 meters long, so eight feet long. And he said, uh, 10 bucks. I said, I'll have that. So that's all I did. I cut the, the front of this skirt, it's 300 deep, and there's a stiffening piece coming across the back, which I made a 90 degree angle out of the plywood with, and it was, uh, I, I ripped that down to 100 mil. And so I've still got a piece left. That's that's this piece here. I got, and I got some left over for another project if I want. So there you go. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Around to the domino. I think we've got enough there. Where are we? I'm going to do another read. Uh, another quick read here. Put that there so I can see what's going on. 25 acres, but over look a lot more. It does. All right, now down to there. Henry, Elise, Alicia, I was thinking the same thing, but only if that portion of the table was on a hinge and swings up flat and again, safety with the radius. Yeah, the only problem with the hinge, the only problem with the hinge is to hinge this up. When you, when you, when you, open it up to be normal, it's a pinch point. Now, this separates. This hasn't been glued on. I can take this off. Watch the video. This all separates. And so the top will go down to being absolutely flat. The legs come off. The drop down skirt here is a total of one foot wide by four inches high. And that's it. All of this will slide under a bed. It's brilliant. Even if I do say so myself. My wife said, David, you're a genius. <laughs> but she loves me. She's very kind to me. Um, what are we going to do next? The domino. The domino, the domino. All right. I want to talk about the domino quickly to start. I was only going to try and do, the, do a bit of stuff with the jointer. But I don't think I'm going to have any time. Unless you guys want me to. Uh, I can go over a little bit if you want. What is it? I've got 10 minutes left. We should be right. I'll tip that up just a little bit more. <sighs> so nice. All right. Jointer. Not jointers. Oh, what am I up to? Okay, Joe Power, I love it. You buy everything first all and then bargain what <laughs> I sure do. Look, I'm not an idiot. I don't throw money away. People think that buying Festool is throwing money away. I don't see it that way. Buy once, cry once. I keep on telling people, I want to buy something that's going to last me. I've got 20 years in front of me at least, I hope. I hope I make 80 years old. And if I do, I want to enjoy all of that time. I don't want to be halfway through and have to buy another machine. These things last and last and last. You ask anyone who's got a track saw, Festival tracks. So I know guys that have had them for 25 years and they say they work like the day they were bought. Go figure. All right. 
Um, constructive criticism. All right, I'm convinced I'm going to get me one of these. If I get the time to make it, that is really handy set up for all sorts of things. Jeff Robinson, Dave Fastcap will be calling you. They may well. Look, if anyone out there wants to uh, get in touch with me regarding manufacturing this little fellow, I reckon it's a winner. I reckon it's a cracker. But the thing is, you guys can make it yourself as well. So same as Ron Polk's um, Polk bench. Let's call this one the Stanton bench. There we go. So Ron, this one's mine. Yours is yours. And uh, I was just thinking about something else then, but I'm, I'm not going to say it. So if anyone out there wants to talk to me about manufacturing, by all means, come and have a chat. Send me an email. You know where I am, davestantonfans at gmail.com. Uh, and everyone has seen it first here. So this is my idea. I don't want anyone thinking that they can go and uh, start marketing it without having a chat to me. All right. This little guy here. This is going to save you a truckload of grief. Now, I'm going to move the camera again, and I'm going to put it back over here, and I will put a domino into this piece. And, oh, look, I'll use the Stanton bench. Ha! Um, I'll pop it there. I'll just use the one clamp. Done. How nice is that? Rock solid. And I'll get the camera over to the other side. And I'll try and catch some reading on the way through. How are we doing there for height? Looks as though it'll be. Oh, I might move it over onto this side. That might work a little better, and then you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Yep, that's all good. Plug the back in. It's pretty important if you're using the domino to make sure you've got dust extraction happening because it it um, why is it important David? Yes because you're creating you've got this there you are you've got this uh, router cutter because this is a router you've got this router cutter spinning backwards and forwards sideways and spinning and sideways if the rubbish is left in the hole you run the risk of eventually maybe snapping it See how I store my hoses? You saw it was hanging up there on the on the top. That way, I don't have to fight with them as much. Any hoses are going to be like that. So keep them warm if you can. Makes them a little bit more flexible. And as I say, hanging up there is great. Now this dust board up there is fine, and the hose, a lead, I should say. I think I've got a lead here somewhere. Right. Great work, David. No lead. Do you have this happen to you at all? You're halfway through doing something and you think, sure I have a lead here. Because I was using one of the machines earlier on. Maybe it's in here. Let's see. No, not in there. This is a great demonstration. Found it. <laughs> you idiot. Idiot, idiot, idiot. There we go. And with the with the Festool plugger cables, if you want these things to last, don't drop them on the floor. You know, I see so many people drop them on the floor. In here, it's not going to be so much of an issue because the floor has got this matting that I put down. What do you think of the matting? And also, I've got some one meter by one meter hard rubber backed mats that aren't worried so much about the machines rolling around on. This stuff here, you can't roll machines like this. You'll kill it. All right. Okay. All done. Now, the reason I'm demonstrating this is this plate here, this extra arm, offers a lot of support if I'm putting a domino in there. Now, I will set the depth to 15 millimeters. This is 19 millimeters, so I'm going to do a blind hole here. I could if I want to set it to 20 and it would track all the way through. And you can watch the video and I'll tell you all about that as well. So now you can see, pardon me, now you can see there's very it's a no-brainer as keeping it steady on there. If without that sometimes it can rock around. So 
You'll see this in, your, in the box. If you buy a Domino, this comes with the machine. Put it on for this style of, of cut. Ah, itchy nose. Here we go. Camera, swing it around here. There you go. How easy was that? Now we we're also talking about doing a interesting joint, which we can do up on the top of the stand, the Stanton bench, <laughs> and see that it's sitting on. That's the handy stick. I love it. See this and watch this. I'm, I, I'm not pretending. I am pushing as hard as I can, and I cannot move this. And again, watch the video. I tell you how to make it work like that. I love this thing. All right. Now, vertical. Yes. This is half the trick. I'm going to do a plunge with the domino. Now I've got plenty of support there. I can set it up and I will know where the mark is going to be, all that kind of stuff. There's little things on the side here, little pins that can drop down, I can utilize. I'll show you that straight away. Drop that out, push that one and that one back in. I have a pin there that's a reference pin now. I'll bring it over closer. See this pin sticking up? That is going to push up against the side. So I can reference off the side of a piece of timber if I'm doing a join. I can do this on this one. I can reference off the other side on the other, the other half of the joint from the other side, and that will give me perfect alignment. Now, all it's a matter of doing now is doing the plunge, making sure I've got all of these guys up out of the way. There we go. And now, the tricky part. Let's get a piece of timber. And I haven't joined to this. We've got a couple of minutes, how about I join it? Alright, there's there's my little jointer. Whip them out of there. And I've got this one here. This is a new nest that I've built. I have to move this switch box here because it makes it hard for me to use the bandsaw. Well, actually impossible. I'm going to drop this down lower or I may even put it on the side of the cabinet. So from a need to hit it. Okay, dust extraction on. So that's pulling through there at the moment. And the piece of timber I'm going to put across the jointer. This jointer is super quiet. I don't need your protection. I want glasses though, because they're probably done. I've loosened now you can hear me over the top of that, can't you? That's the advantage of a helical head. It's actually a segmented head. It's not a turn sideways slicing. It's a still forward facing cutter. But there's 96, I think, around the head. The same knives in this as they are in that one. Here's another little thing. I don't know if you guys can hear. I use just an ordinary brush. Anything non that's a uh, hand slip material, use this.
Да. I don't know if you could hear me while I was chatting during that. But what I was trying to say was how quiet that machine is in comparison to other jointers that I've had. Because it's got a segmented head. It's a head, it's a helical head, but all of the knives are facing forwards. They're not tipped over at an angle. The ones that tip over at an angle give a slicing effect. The helical head is still just basically a straight cut forwards, but I like the finish that this one does because there's no corrugation at all, which you will find. There's a very fine corrugation on uh, true helical heads. Now these things, all you need is a little brush and good colour. <laughs> you see my post in Facebook. There was 3,000 million bloody brushes for me to choose from. Fixed. If these things get a whole lot of dust on them, they're not going to grip. It doesn't take much to do it. Um, I leave them sitting up here beside the machines and then it's there ready for me to go. Right, now that I've done that, why did I do that? Okay, there's the finish on it. And on that side, that is super smooth. There's the side that I just cleaned up. Well, that's what it was like. And then now it's like that. Love my jointer. Uh, right, let's. I'll dock this off at 45 degrees. There we go. Just zap that off with the capex. That's a beautiful job. And that's not burn, that's different moisture contents inside the pine. The resin near the knot. All right, let's do this next part. And I'm going to put a domino into here. Swing this around over. Back that way a bit. And as I say, I'm going to go slightly over today, guys, but you know, if it's annoying to you, you can turn off. Otherwise, keep watching. Right. Move that one out of the way. Anywhere. <laughs> Look at that. It ain't going anywhere. And I'm not I'm not playing around. That's that's fair to So I'll bring it out here. And the other thing I've done is I took the bolt, the mushroom head bolt, off the Craig bench clamp and I put a Rockler 516 T bolt. This is one of their one inch long ones and it just fits in nicely. Now, this was a suggestion by one of the guys on the show a week or two ago, and I thought, no, it's not going to work. But it does work, and it goes straight into their trap. Now, all I've done is I've backed the pressure off, so I'm not really giving it, you know, three million pounds of pressure, because these are only a mild steel. They're not hardened steel like the ones that come with the plant. But it does the job. It's holding it. It's... It's not going anywhere. It's held sufficiently for me to be able to do this part of the joint. Then one of the other things I put a post in Facebook. If you keep watching my Facebook page, I throw up ideas all the time. I don't. I don't stop thinking at night time. When I'm asleep, it's still the old grey matter is still ticking over. I'm sure it happens to everyone else. Uh, but I put the foot, the rubber foot, on the other side, or plastic foot, whatever it is. This used to come around on this side. And the bloody thing, every time I closed the clamp, it was pulling towards the body of the clamp. And eventually, you know, this rubber foot kept falling off, kept falling off. It was driving me crazy. And I just had one of those moments where, of course, you moron, turn it around the other way, slide it in from this side. So every time I tighten that clamp up, it pulls tight. See that? It pulls towards. It's pulling towards. It's pulling towards. It's a no-brainer. If you've got one of these, do it. <laughs> okay. Where are we? 45 degrees. That's what angle that is. We're going to flip this over to 45 because it's an indexed position. I can leave that base piece on and I just have to make sure that this is going to go far enough. I want to keep it on two of those uh, 
non-slips. And I better plug the power in because they don't go too well without electricity. My children, you did not see me change that cable without turning the power off. There we go. I will bring it up. 40 millimeters is way too deep. I'll set it back to there. That'll do me fine. Okay. I'm not going to tell it where to go at this stage. I'll just put it in. That's all good. Now, I should have really gone a little bit deeper. I'll take it down so it's about about that deep. I want to make sure I've got that much plunge. No, I don't. I'll take it back one. That's good enough. Um, I'm going to go down slightly lower. Now, what I've done, because I'm pushing things, running, rushing a little bit here, it's not going to go into the same position. So I'm going to lower the joint down by about 10 millimeters. Beautiful. But one of the other things also, I've unwittingly, I've had the domino, it was on wide, not on narrow. As I said, rushing, shouldn't be doing it. But that will give you an idea of how things are going to work. Get that there, get a domino. There it is. There we go. Goes in there. And then this, let's put it in there first, hey? That one in there. And then into there. Now, that was in loose position. You can't see it, can you? I'll tip it down. All right. I'll drop down here. Like, like I'm under the under the uh, staircase. So that is was in its loose position. Come on, this side a little bit better. So that was in its loose position, the full wobble, and so I can move this backwards and forwards this direction. But I'm just I'm trying to explain how. You can do a 45 onto a flat plane. You can do a 90 onto a flat plane. The machine is so versatile. And this is a joint that I had never actually considered. I'd always seen as joint like to like, you know, a 90 degree, which would be the other half of that mitre going out the other direction. So there you go. I'm going to do a little bit of reading and we're going to have to close the thing down. Back to about there. That'll let me come around to this side. We've gone way over time today, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Uh, okay, there we go. Peter, give a thumbs up, folks. Yeah, by all means. If you can do a thumbs up, that always helps the channel along as well. Uh, Bob Lewin, good evening, Dave from New Jersey. Pierre to make amen on the 20 years and 70. Well, there you go. I wish you get another 20 years at least. Uh, Peter, yep, I found Mr. Plywood arrogant and expensive. Well, there you go. Pierre, that was the reason for the 500 and the 700 XL. John Lafferty, keep to show running as long as you want today. Oh, well, thank you very much, John. Thank you for the permission. Um, Wayne, Message retracted. Henry, question off topic. What is the type of jointer and planer you're using in the background? Uh, they're Carbotech machines. That's where I work part time. I've got a part time job with these guys, worked for them for a few years. And because I'm staff, I get the machines cheaper, obviously, as part of my package. So that's the reason I jumped in with them. And also, they're a nice machine. They do a great job. Very happy with them. Um, so there you go. Uh, and the machines are, the one on the left is my thickness planer. We, in Australia, we call them a thicknesser. 
the rest of the world calls them a planer, except for in England, I think they also call them a thicknesser. Uh, it is a 15 inch machine, one horse, sorry, one single phase, three horse, and the jointer is an eight inch wide long bed jointer. So it's nearly two meters long, just shy, eight inches wide. And it also is a, um, it's a one and a half horse motor in that. It doesn't need the massive big motor. So it will plug into a 10 amp uh, outlet without a problem. That's 240 volt, obviously in Australia. And what else, what else, what else? It, you can do rebating on the front. I've done a video on, on that machine. If you're on both of those machines, if you want, and I'll put some links up. I can, you can, I don't know which side is going to be probably up here. I'll put a link up here, a link up there at the end of the show on the videos that I've done on both of those machines. Um, okay, Wayne, almost bedtime for us. This old bloke early start in the morning to all in and around Florida. Say good, stay safe. Good night from me. Henry, uh, are you happy with them or would you have chosen differently? No, I would not have chosen differently. I love these machines. The only thing I would have done differently if I had three phase power available in this building, I would have got a three phase um, thicknessing machine. The jointer is fine, not a problem, <clears throat> no problem at all. When I'm putting spotted gum, which is an Australian native hardwood, if I'm putting a full 15 inch wide slab through the thicknesser, yeah, it can bog down. I have to be extremely careful with big sections like that. Where a three-phase machine, not a problem at all. It would have just chewed through it. It's it's single phase gives one pulse per per wave. Three phase basically giving you three pulses of power uh, for the same length of wave. That's that's the advantage. It's like a V8 versus a single cylinder. You know, a whole lot more grunt. Um, okay. Good night, Wayne. Uh, have, Percy, can you zoom in the show us the helical jointer blades? Uh, how wide is your... I, I will in a second. How wide is your jointer? Eight inch. I've just answered that. Dynamax Dave has a great video about his jointer and the blade on YouTube already, if you recall correctly, and how to maintain a sharp jointer. Correct. Peter, okay, thanks. New boy on the block. That's fine. Diana, he also unboxes and shows how to put them together and properly tune balance it. Yes. Dynamax 8 inch, correct? Uh, classic for telling us all about his fun toys. I've got other toys here that I've got to do videos. I'll tell you, what, I've got videos. I've got so many ideas. I've got another thing I want to do with this bench. And you guys are going to be saying, what the? <laughs> it's not, look, it's not groundbreaking, but I was looking and I was thinking, you know, I can trick this up and make all these accessories with plywood. And why not? It's fun. It's something I can do here. I've already got a bit of plywood, so I'm already on the track. So, as I say, it's something that you can do at home, enjoy it, have a ball, you know, follow what I do. Uh, but do it safer, because sometimes I'm not terribly safe. Okay. Uh, Steve, love the Star Trek effects of the domino gives you to the microphone. All right. Uh, John Lafferty notebooks are a must for the constant thinkers. I have them everywhere. Thanks for It's a pleasure, Carl. Uh, Bruno, uh, I don't know what that is. Douglas, uh, once again, Dave, excellent show. Thanks. That's Thank you. Jeff Robinson, don't forget to pray for our woodworking friends in Florida. Exactly right. Not a good time to be in Florida at the moment. Jim, another newbie here as well. Can you remind us, me, where the videos are located? On my channel. Yep. So go into the channel. Just click the rest of the channel here. Click into, uh, click on where it says videos and they will all cascade down in front of you. So just click on videos and away it goes. What else have we got? What else have we got? That's it for this week. Sorry guys, sorry that I've run over time. Don't forget, send me some photos in, uh, subscribe to the channel, click the thumbs up if you enjoy what I'm doing. Watch the video that I've made on this, on this uh, skirt, this drop down, the apron, whatever you want to call it. Uh, by all means, watch that. It's it's. I had so much fun doing it, and as I said, I got lost at the end. I, I couldn't work out how how to make it, whether it was just going to be on the project or how to do it as well. Uh, not a problem, Jim. Uh, okay. As I say, thumbs up, thumbs up, guys. If you can, that's great. Um, subscribe to the channel. Use the affiliate links. It does help support the channel. 
And uh, especially Amazon, as I say, I follow you around in Amazon. You click on a link for Amazon from me, I'll follow you into the store and you can go around. I had someone buy two hot water services the other day, nothing to do with carpentry. And yeah, Amazon gave me a commission. And that's lovely. And uh, no extra cost to you guys. All right, Dynamax, but you have an excellent attitude uh, letting us learn all about your fun. Thanks, Dave. Not a problem at all. Thank you very much, guys. I'm going to have to say goodbye now because I've got to finish editing this video for you guys to enjoy. See you next time. Stay safe, especially everyone in Florida. Look after yourselves and have a great week. See you back here at the same time. And I'm sorry I've gone nearly 20, 20 minutes over. That's insane. See you later.